Hey everybody and welcome to a new edition of Beer Googles. Double E double O double G. Today is Thursday, April 15th, and in lieu of that, I wanted to do a quick, fun little uh, United States tax break episode. So I beer googled an, uh, an article about uh, 10 crazy sounding tax deductions that the IRS says are legit. So I thought I'd share those with you. Now, we don't have to file until May 17th this year, 2021, so it's a good thing, I guess. I don't know, but... Uh, First one on the list, breast augmentation. That's correct. Cosmetic surgery costs are usually non-deductible, but an exotic dancer named Chesty Love tested this rule. If you want bigger tips, you go bigger, she reasoned. So she decided to go way bigger, shelling out for breast implants that would bloat her bra size to 56 double F. When she wrote off the bill, the IRS said it was non-deductible cosmetic surgery. But in Hess v. Commissioner, the tax court allowed tax benefits, allowing her to claim the implants as depreciable assets, a type of stage prop. So boobs are stage prop, ladies and gentlemen. Well, extra boobs, I guess. So get extra boobs, write them off. Uh, But I guess you have to use them for your craft. So you also have to do uh, other stuff. But uh, the second one on the list, interesting enough, paying for your lover. In Bruce v. Commissioner, Bruce hired his live-in girlfriend to find furniture, oversee repairs at rental properties, and to run his personal household. The IRS said deducting her pay was not legit, but Bruce went to tax court and won. The court said $2,500 of the $9,000 he paid her was a business expense, but paying her for housekeeping chores was non-deductible. So, pay for a lover, I guess? I wonder... I don't know if the other one's like an entertainment expense, if you can go to like the bunny ranch or something. But anyway, the third one on the list, deducting a pet food. Oh, Megsy's going to love that one. A California cat lady got national press for a decision allowing vet bills and cat foods as charitable contributions. But after she beat the IRS, she faced animal cruelty charges. Even with that ending, hers isn't the only successful cat deduction in C right V commissioner. A couple ran a junkyard. They put out food to attract wild cats to control snakes and rats, making the junkyard safer for customers. When they claim the cat food is a business expense, the IRS, IRS said, no way tax court saved the day. So cat food, Megzi, our blind redheaded dog who eats one scoop, two scoops a day. We are going to be able, we're going to make so much money back on that. Um, The next one on the list, drunk driving expense. Well, how about that? After after Mr. Roars drank too much at a party, he waited for hours until he was okay to get his car. Still, he drove off the road and was arrested. His car was damaged and his insurance company refused to cover it. So Mr. Roars paid for the repairs and deducted them. It was a casualty loss, he claimed. The IRS said no, but the tax court allowed him his deduction. Well, I would still not drink and drive though so don't do that but uh anyway number five on the list babysitting fees of course i don't even think that one's strange but babysitters are personal expenses plus irs publications say you can't deduct child care expenses as a charitable contribution even if they allow you to do volunteer work for charity mrs kingsley had a sitter sitter so she could do volunteer work and deducted the sitter fees anyway the irs said no but she won in tax court in kingsley v commissioner so anyway that's interesting uh, i guess i would have thought you could write those off regardless but anyway this next one's interesting i thought free beer Remember trading stamps? In a promotion scheme that wouldn't fly today, a gas station offered free beer instead of trading stamps. The owner deducted the beer as a business expense, and the IRS said no. But in Sullivan v. Commissioner, he won in tax court. Makes total sense. It was a business expense. He was trying to get people to drink and drive back in whatever year that was. So that probably would have been a long time ago. These are not good stories about drinking and driving, ladies and gentlemen. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be uh, acknowledging or heroicizing these things. Anyway, home landscaping. 
That sounds like another repair, or some kind of upgrade to your house. But home office deductions are notoriously scrutinized. So it might surprise you that someone deducted home landscaping and won. In Langer v. Commissioner, a man regularly met clients in his home office and kept up the place to make it suitable. It wasn't all deductible, but the tax court allowed part of the landscaping costs and even money for lawn care and driveway repairs. Well, that's very kind of them. Thank you, IRS tax court. Um, this next one's interesting too. Uh, Megzi might like this cause, uh, I'm kind of scrambling getting this episode out. It's eight 30, uh, on Thursday night. So we lost power for like four hours, but, uh, first world white guy problems, I think is what that is. But, uh, we're back up and running and, uh, Megzi's like, how about moving? I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So she might like this one. Pet moving expenses. If you're changing jobs and meet several tests, IRS says you can deduct moving expenses. The IRS says you can even deduct moving expenses for your pet, and they are not even subject to alternative minimum tax. So right there, get many or the biggest pet. I'm not sure how that works price-wise. So Uh, number nine on the list, body oil. This won't work for most people, but Corey L. Weir was a professional bodybuilder who went through a lot of body oil, so his muscles would glisten during the competition. When he deducted the oil on his taxes, the IRS said no. The tax court let it slip by since it greased the way for more wins. Oh, I love the pun. But, uh, yeah, so body oil, if you're using it that excessively uh, because bodybuilding is your job, I guess that would make sense. This final one kind of makes sense for everyone. We'll close it out with this one. Um, Swimming pools. Legitimate medical expenses can include wide-ranging tax breaks, but there's a high percentage threshold for deducting them. With big expenses like swimming pool, it can matter. In Cherry V. Commissioner, the tax player had emphysema and installed a swimming pool after his doctor ordered an exercise program or regimen. The primary purpose of the pool was, medic- was medical care, so he got a flat, fat deduction. I thought it said flat, but I've been doing my taxes, so. A fat deduction. It even covered part of the cost of heating the pool, pool chemicals, and a proportionate part of insuring the pool area. These deductions aren't for everyone, but some deductions can be surprising. Even to justify private air travel, you don't have to be Warren Buffett. In French v. Commissioner, rather than driving for hours or being limited to one daily commercial flight, the Frenches bought their own plane to check on their rental condo. The IRS said no way, but the tax court allowed write-offs even though this condo, the condo was a big loss. Happy tax time, everyone! So that has been 10 of the weirdest uh, or crazy-sounding tax deductions that the IRS says are legitimate. Um, next Monday... Uh, what day is that? I don't even remember. I think it's the 19th, but or Tuesday. I'm sorry. Next Tuesday, the 20th. Uh, we're going to have the part two of our suicide episode. So please uh, stick around for that. That would be Tony of MJ news digest and myself sharing our personal stories uh, of our loss of some people that we knew. So stick around for that. But uh, once again, this has been a short beer Googles. Um, please follow us, rate us, review, 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 you know, all the good stuff, uh, rate, give us the five stars. We love those. So, uh, thank you again. Um, if you're interested in coming on the show, please, uh, reach out to me. My, uh, Twitter is at knocked con. So at K N O C K E D C O N. And then, uh, once again, another beer Googles has come and gone. I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you did your taxes. I hope you, the, the pencil was sharp. I hope it wasn't too dull, and I hope uh, nothing too bad happens to you on the back end of those. But you still have a month. Once again, filing is May 17th of 2021 this year, and I think that probably has something to do with the other stuff going on. So thanks again for listening, everybody. Have a great night. (laughs) 